today is Saturday, April 15th. Best day ever, because Brian's in town. Let's look at him. Okay. Hi. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> We just finished an event with his dad. His dad works with John Maxwell, who is a personal development leadership influensive coach. He's written hundreds of books. If you guys don't know who he is, check him out. But it was really fun getting to know a lot more like-minded people. And now we are headed to the gym. Deadlift day for the both of us. Both of us just started a new program too, which is very exciting. So we're gonna do some deadlifts and I will catch you guys at the gym. Woo! This is Alchemine. This is Fat Burner Stimulant High Volume. It's the pump product. Together, they rock. I wanted to tell you guys, I don't know what it is. I haven't had this combo at all. I put Strawberry Breeze Aminos in here, Cotton Candy High Volume, and Sunrise Alphamine, and like this is probably my favorite combo I've ever tried. It's so delicious. It's like a cocktail without the alcohol. It's true though. Here is my program. So today we're doing conventional deadlifts at four sets of six. Then we're doing four by eight for a bent over row, neutral grip pull down, and then we're just gonna do a bunch of bunch of uh, this stuff, and then we're gonna do some cardio. for six reps and I go up to 155 because I'm a big girl and I can do that. Honestly, I've just kind of been underesti underestimating myself when it comes to how much weight I can do. I told you guys before when my workout with Will, I just like think that I lost strength so I'm like, I can't, but I can. So it's like push yourself and like do everything right and be patient. Patience is huge. I felt really good about those deadlifts, guys. I absolutely love doing conventional deadlifts now. I know I've always done sumo, but conventional is like my new fave. So the next few things I did, I am prioritizing pull days twice a week for my new training split. So I'm doing a pull day where I'm focusing on deadlifts and um, back and bicep accessory, and then I'm doing another pull day um, as my my other training day. I do four training days. Two of them are pull days with deadlifts and back and biceps work. So in this exercise, you see me doing neutral grip pull downs. I'm very strict on these. Um, I have them at a little bit of a uh, moderate to heavy weight. And then I'm just making sure that my scapula is retracted and pulling down. And then I supersetted this with banded hyperextensions. I got this band from roguefitness.com. I actually got a bunch of bands, an orange one. Um, I, got a, I got a green one, a blue one. And I'm also using those bands to do pull-ups so I did pull-ups the day before I didn't record it but I worked out with a friend so I'm actually doing pull-ups two or three times a week what I'm gonna do is just um, start with bands and then go for four or five sets as many as I can do until um, until I can't do them anymore so I'm also going to be focusing a little bit on eccentric movements when it comes to doing pull-ups. Um, it, it helps just doing the, the second half of the movement, which is like more so just the top part of the pull-up where you're holding at the very top and then going really slow on the way down. Next, you guys see me doing some stiff leg deadlifts. I absolutely love doing these with dumbbells. Um, a lot of people do these incorrectly where they just kind of go all the way down to their ankles as far as possible, but I just focus on a really slow stretch in my hamstring and then I'll stop when I feel like it's fully stretched and then I'll contract back up without ever releasing tension on my hamstrings and then I also supersetted this with a rear delt fly so really focusing on the posterior chain a lot of this workout and then my last movements were two bicep movements. So here you see me doing spider curls, which we, you have a incline bench. You lay on your stomach on it, and then you get an easy bar and then curl. You just focus on keeping your arms a little bit out and then going 
all the way contract all the way stretched and then all the way contracted and don't release the tension and don't let your arms hang a little bit and I also did some banded bicep curls but my camera ran out of memory so that was it for the workout Here you go, babe. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. So you guys saw Brian and I did a little, he was sleeping. I was filming. Were you filming? A little bit. <laughs> anyway, we went to the beach and it was lovely. We stayed there for like an hour and a half, two, and we just hung out. Um, and then we went to the grocery store. I'll show you guys a little bit about what we got. Got some Carbaster yogurt. I like the blueberry a lot. I have been getting these Chobani flips and they're great and all, but they definitely are a little higher in calorie. They're, eh, they're not bad. No, they're like not bad at all. It's 12 protein, 24 carb, and then five fat. Which definitely isn't bad at all, but sometimes I prefer like, I want yogurt because it's summer and it's nice and like, it's warm and I want something cold like yogurt. I love yogurt. I got some ground turkey. We're gonna make dinner tomorrow. Taco season ground turkey. If you haven't had this yet, it's amazing. This extra flavor added is delish. Veggies, we got lots of fruit. We got blueberries, bananas, and apples. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. We got spring mix, egg whites. And these probiotic drinks that I'm obsessed with, Kavita. Delicious. It's like a kombucha type thing. It's a sparkling probiotic drink. It First ingredient is purified water. The next ingredient is probiotic culture. It's like a bunch of different bacteria, which it's you're supposed to have that in probiotics. Um, apple cider vinegar, lemon, cayenne, stevia leaf extract, and yeah. It's delicious, it's only one carb, which is great. Oh, we forgot to get cereal. So, sitting down to work a little bit now. I'm gonna talk to you guys in a sec. So we both had a really good day but we have something to share with you guys, giving you guys my input right here. So as you guys see in the title of this video, and you guys have asked me plenty of times since Brian and I first started dating, you guys are wondering like, how long are you guys gonna do the long distance thing? Like who's gonna move where? Like what's going on? And him and I kind of decided a few, uh, a little while ago about this, um, but we didn't like confirm it yet and it wasn't like set in stone but it since has gotten set stone. Um, Brian and I are moving in together. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to like my best friend or like my mom and I'm like, so we're moving in together and I just wanna let you know why. <laughs> um, you guys, like I share some of my personal life with you and you guys have seen him and I first started dating back in like the beginning of December and it's only been a few months since then. It's been December, January, February, March, four months almost and you guys have seen like little snippets of him and I together a few times every few weeks because we've been long distance. He lives in DC and I live in California and it's completely separate. And you guys have seen a little bit of us interacting and stuff, but you haven't seen, you haven't seen like a lot, which is intentional. Um, it's actually been really great for our relationship that we weren't able to be in front of each other and in front of each other's cameras in the initial stages of our relationship, just because like he vlogs and I vlog and it's great and stuff, but like that long distance actually kind of helped us, I think, in the beginning parts of our relationship. And we were able to build a relationship outside of the whole YouTube thing, which I think has been really great for us. And I can assure you that like what you see may potentially be a concern or like the things that you might be writing in the comment section after watching this. I can assure you that we've thought of all those things and this is a very well thought out decision. Him and I, we fell in love. like hard and fast. We fell in love really quickly. And him and I could both say that really confidently because it's just completely true. And we've just created happiness in each other's lives like neither of us had ever thought would would come about. And with this move, like we both felt it being right in like both of our hearts. Like we both just knew it was right regardless of what hesitations that we might have had, whether they were like potential things that people might say or potential things that could go wrong. But if you're always living in that like, what could go wrong, maybe I shouldn't just because of what could go wrong type of type of life, type of mindset, you're not really living. Like you're kind of just existing. And I think that living outside of the what could go wrong and living obviously like 
this was a logical decision. Like we talked things out. We talked about pros and cons and all that stuff. Like we have talked about it all, trust me. But if you're always living in like the what potentially could go wrong and you don't make decisions based off of that, then you're not really living to your full potential. Like I said, when we first started dating, um, with anything in life for me, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And it's a big no. And with him, I've always just really felt like it was a hell yes. And it's a, it's a big yes for me particularly. I've just felt like that since the beginning. And then it has since gotten magnified and amplified since we first started dating. So Brian has since gotten a, a job here. He's gotten a new accounting job and he has ended his lease in DC. We've actually signed on a brand new apartment that we're both gonna be moving into together. We're moving at the in the beginning of May. And then right after I go to London, I leave for London on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. You guys are seeing this on Monday. I leave for London tomorrow. And then once I get back to, from London, I'm going to DC and then we're driving from DC to California. So you guys will be seeing a lot of that stuff. We're really just like happy and excited, honestly, guys. Like we're just so, excited to start this new chapter of our lives and it's gonna be a big transition like it's a big step and big transition for anybody especially people that are putting it on the internet and if you guys are wondering about karen <sighs> I was honestly, I was so happy for her. I sort of saw it coming, just seeing their relationship kind of evolve. So it really didn't come as a surprise to me. And if there's anyone that I would want to see take my roommate spot, it would be Brian. I adore him and I love them together. And honestly, Amanda's happiness just is through the roof and that makes me happy. So I know they won't be able to share clothes, but she knows I don't like to cuddle. So at least she has that now. She has a cuddler. What about another roommate? No one's Amanda. I've come to that conclusion and I don't want to risk it. So I will be getting a solo apartment, me, myself, and I. <laughs> Literally nobody can replace Karen. Like she has been the biggest light in my life since we first moved in together last, um, last July. And she would say the same thing about me. We were talking about it, we're like, no one would ever replace you. <laughs> She's just she's just like my little light my little sister even though she's older than me like we're just we feel like sisters because we just get along so well and like living with her has like been the ideal roommate situation to be completely honest like living with anybody else is like scary but she she completely understands she fully supports me as someone who's my really good friend she sees this decision as something that's correct as a as opposed to something that she thinks is not the best decision for me like she supports me in every single way so um, I think that's great, but no one will ever replace Karen. With this, I just ask that you guys like respect us in this transitional time, um, whether you like agree or disagree or like whatever, it is a transitional time for us. And all I just ask from you guys is just some respect really. And him and I, like we're not worried, we're not anxious, we're not stressed. It's just a transitional time and we just have to kind of get used to stuff. So all just we'd ask is respect and for support from you guys. So yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> feel good. You killed it. You know how to use them words so well. No. We just watched my clip that I said he hasn't seen it yet. The one that you just watched. My thoughts are basically echoing everything you said. It is, uh... <laughs> this is not something that we expected to happen when we first met each other, but... We are people that follow our guts and trust our instincts within reason. And we logic things out. Logical and, peeps. And everything has made sense leading up to this point. And um, we're kind of just following our hearts in a way. And uh, oh, I'm very hearts excited. Hearts and minds at the same time, I think. Yeah. We match yeah. them. I don't know. I don't know how to word this, but <laughs> when you know, you know. And it just... <laughs> Guys. Yeah. yeah, when you know, you know, and it's one of those situations that, you know, I'll say this, you make time, you make the things work that are most important for you in your life. And for me, you know, moving out here, I mean, Amanda is a big motive in that, but also I see my life flourishing here as well. And um, I've always seen myself moving out this area and, um, Obviously, this our relationship has expedited that happening, and um, I'm just very excited. So, woo! Give it a like if you're excited. <laughs>
Or just give it a like. <laughs> Bye, guys.